This is a quick tutorial showing you how you can create this wrapping paper transition using the wrapping paper product from LumaBox. So to start, I have two facades that I generated with LumaMap and I've brought them into a comp and I've dragged one to start after the other so that I can transition between the two. So as for the wrapping paper files themselves, they will be different depending on when you purchase them. If you bought the wrapping paper product before December 2023, inside your product folder, you will see a series of MP4 files, which have the black background sort of baked in as it were. But if you are interested in having the black areas transparent so that you can sort of see through the wrapping paper, the black areas at least, and use it as a transition, you will be most interested in what's inside the folder called PNG image sequence with alpha, because alpha means transparency. So what you would do is go to file, import file. And so this is the fault wrapping paper folder, product folder, and this is what you would see. So you're interested in this folder here, and let's say paper one, you want to import it, you would select the first file and here sequence options, you want PNG sequence ticked on. So now when you import, it will bring in that whole sequence as sort of one single, as one single sequence. So this is multiple PNGs, but one sequence that you can deal with as if it were one file. So all you would do with this is drag it on top of your facades and drag it to where you want the transition to occur. Maybe scale it up. I'm gonna click on this handle here, start clicking and dragging, and I'm gonna hold shift just to lock those um, proportions and just scale it up a little bit. And that's pretty much all there is to it if you have the PNG sequence. Um, you may want to add a drop shadow. So I have that sequence selected and I'll double click drop shadow. And I can increase the distance and the softness. Maybe bring the opacity right down, make it really kind of subtle. And I also, so that's as if there was a light shining up here in the top left. Um, as you can see, it's casting a shadow sort of um, to the bottom right. But I would also like there to be shadow on this edge as well. So I'm actually going to duplicate this effect by going to edit, duplicate. And I'm going to change the direction so that I also get a shadow on that side as well. Just a little bit of shadow to make it sort of feel a bit more physical in the scene and reacting to light that's uh, supposedly in the scene. Now I'm going to show you how to do the wrapping paper effect if you bought the wrapping paper product after December 2023. Your product folder will contain these files and the key to achieving um, transparency in the black areas of the file is by using the main file in conjunction with this alpha file that, that accompanies it. So the first thing you want to do is grab, let's say paper one and click and drag it onto this icon here to put it into its own comp. So now uh, paper one is sitting inside its own comp called paper one. And I want to also grab paper one alpha and drag it on top of paper one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this file, this paper one alpha file to drive the transparency of paper one because alpha means transparency. And we're going to use the luminance in this file. So that's how bright the pixels are to tell where paper one should be opaque and where it should be transparent. And it will be opaque where the pixels are brightest of all, i.e. the white areas, and transparent where the pixels are darkest of all, i.e. the black areas. 
So we do that by setting paper one to have paper one alpha as its track mat. So if you don't see this track mat column, you might need to click toggle switches. And for paper one, we set the track mat to paper one alpha. And we still don't see any transparency and that's because we want to switch it from alpha mat to luma mat. Luma short for luminance. So that's the brightness, the black and the white areas it's looking at in this file. So it's set to luminance and now we see those transparent areas just like we wanted. So if we go back to our transition scene, we can now grab paper one comp, which has the transparency up on top here. And another thing to add is that the new version of wrapping paper is now 4K. So I was working in full HD, 1920 by 1080. So I want to scale this down and I can click and drag on this corner handle. And if I hold shift while I do it, that will lock those proportions so that I can't squash and stretch the file. Uh, so now it's the right size and we're seeing that transparency and seeing through to the layers underneath and the, tran the transition is working just the way it should. I would like to add some drop shadow onto this as well. So with it selected, I am going to type drop shadow, double click, and here it is. I'm going to increase the distance to something like that increase the softness to make it really quite soft and maybe bring down the opacity just a little bit. I want something very subtle just to separate it a bit from the background, but maybe I went too far with the opacity. But you can adjust this to taste when you have something that you like. I would also like to have um, a drop shadow on this right side as well. So it's like there's a light source shining sort of down onto the paper and creating a shadow underneath. So I can duplicate this effect by going to edit, duplicate. And now I can just click and drag on the direction and just adjust that so that it appears on this um, right hand side as well. So I'm pretty happy with those drop shadows. The last thing I would like to show you um, is what if you would like the wrapping paper to remain in this fully wrapped state for a bit longer before it starts to unwrap. Like imagine you, you wrap up your facade and then maybe you want a little character to come in here and do a little bit of a dance or whatever. And, and so you need it to be longer than just a few seconds before it starts to unwrap again. Well, the way we do that is making sure it's selected. We can right click on it and go to time, enable time remapping. And then what I'm going to do is find the moment where it's fully wrapped. So I'd say that's about there. And I add a keyframe by clicking this button. And then I'm gonna find the moment that it starts to unwrap. So I've gone a bit too far. I'm just going to drop down to half resolution just to improve the performance of my machine. So there is where it begins. And what we can do now is um, select both of those keyframes and we can pull those around in time. And I need to click and drag on the um, end point of this layer as well to extend it. And what happens now is the unwrap doesn't start until we move past this keyframe. So you could move it back further, extending it again, or however long you need. And you would just, if you wanted the unwrap to begin here, let's say, you would just move that keyframe to that point. So that's how you can animate the, um, the timings of the, the sort of wrapping in, holding, and unwrapping again. If you liked this video, why not hit that like button and subscribe if you don't wanna miss what's coming next.